Hey everybody, it's Pastor Steve here. And uh, today for your um, your small group discussion stuff, your one another groups, uh, we are going to talk about Romans 3, 9 through 20. So I'm recording this on a Tuesday and we're going to be preaching on this on Sunday, October 23rd. Um, but this is just to give you a few things to discuss and to think about uh, as you're uh, studying this passage together. Um, but this passage, chapter 3, verses 9 through 20, really is Paul's summary statement of all the things that he has been saying about people um, from chapter 1, verse 18, all the way through chapter 3, verse 8. Um, where if you remember, in 118, he's saying that the wrath of God is being revealed, and that is being revealed to all people, um, especially those, definitely toward those um, who have suppressed their knowledge of God. Um, and he talks really about first how it's the Gentiles, the uh, the pagans, the heathens, those who are without God, who are obviously under God's wrath. Um, and he lists a whole uh, list of sins that make it pretty obvious that, yeah, sure, those people are under God's wrath. Uh, but unless uh, the, his Jewish audience were to say, well, that's them, but that's not me. In chapter 2, he kind of goes into this bit that, well, even you moral Jews are under God's wrath as well. Uh, because you don't even keep your own morality. You don't even keep um, the, the type of law that you set for yourself. Um, so, of course, you're guilty as well. And then... Uh, if in case the religious Jews were to say, well, that's them, that's not me, Paul goes in and says, well, even the religious Jews are under God's wrath as well, and that they too are guilty uh, because their, their religion uh, is meaningless. Uh, it's not enough to satisfy God's wrath. And so here he comes in, chapter 3, and he says, the, the pagans, the Gentiles, they're guilty. The Jews, both moral Jews and religious Jews, are guilty. And here in the summary statement, he's saying that everybody is guilty, that we're all guilty, that there are none that are righteous, uh, there are none who seek after God. And so from this, it's just really clear that we're going to need a righteousness that's outside of ourselves, that's outside of anything that we can do to earn it. And of course, that's what we'll get into later on in chapter 3. But here in the summary statement, it's just this idea that we are all guilty. Um, and then from it, that says that every mouth will be silenced and that the whole world is going to be held accountable to God. And that even though we have the laws of God, that really what those laws do is to reveal to us and make us aware of our sin. Um, and so really none of us can be held without excuse um, we're all guilty uh, and that we need uh, something outside of ourselves to bring us uh, into a right relationship with God. And so as you look at this passage, it seems pretty easy. Paul quotes a lot of verses from the Old Testament. But I want you to discuss just a few things as you look at these few verses. You know, so when it talks about that we're all under sin, what does it mean to be under sin? Who is under sin, and, and what does that mean for us? Um, if you were to share your faith with somebody and they were to say, uh, well, I have no sin, what would you say? Now, if you were sharing your faith with somebody and you were to say, I searched for God and I can't find him, what would you say? Um, if you were to share your faith with somebody and they were to say, well, I'm a good person, so God should accept me. What would you say? Um, and then last uh, thing that maybe you can discuss together in your one another groups is, what does it mean for us to be accountable to God? Um, what does that look like and why is that really important? And then what hope do we have? Um, and again, that's what we'll be talking about in future weeks as well. So, all right. Well, God bless you, and I hope you have a good time discussing this passage together.